Right. My presentation will be very fast and very overwhelming. I have 209 slides for 40 minutes. So, uh, just sit back and uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, if I go too fast or if my English is good uh, enough for you, please give me a sign. I practice my presentation and it's by heart. So if you have any remarks or questions during my presentation, please feel, please feel, feel free to, to ask your questions at, at that point. Um, well, that's sir. As you saw, I think every medium has. Uh, an expiration date. Every medium has an expiration date. If you're working with something, something that, that seems to be working for you at the time, but you also have to look ahead towards the next digital transformation, digital finding, and have to decide upon what will we be doing with this new finding. Uh, every medium has its own expiration date. That's my first remark. And my um, first um, tip towards you here in the audience is use only what you need. Just choose from it. You don't have to follow all the ideas other people have. Just some basic, um, uh, basic economics. Have an organization where people are working, performing certain tasks, uh, making decisions, trying to form a strategy which leads to a certain business situation and, and hopefully to good business results. And all the things we're doing all together leads to our organizational culture. But then there's the outside world. Then there's new inventions. And you have to decide upon will we in our organization be the ones to jump on the first new thing, um, like the early majority, or, or will we sit this one out and wait for version 2.0 or the next idea or, or anything um, like that, uh, or be, uh, be a laggard? It doesn't have to be that in your organization you have to choose every new invention. You can be a laggard on printing, for instance, and can be an early adapter on uh, uh, enterprise social media or anything. I think it depends on the uh, digitalization of your people in your organization. How digitally um, active are your uh, staff members? And um, as many research models show, uh, there's always the matter of the um, perceptions of usefulness of a new medium. Will this help me? And then will it act and adopt? I think it's a matter of sustainability. You just have to be prepared for the future. This is looking forward. What's real? What's fake? What's something that can help our organization ahead? What's real? What's fake? You have to test it in your organization, I think. Um, at one point, I give you an example. At one point, there was this temp agency, and they decided to start a project and build a, a digital world in which um, they rebuild the uh, temp agency world. And um, they had these, uh, these billboards with uh, all the vacancies and stuff like that. And um, what do you think? Did it lead towards more turnover for the organization? No, it didn't. And this project completely failed from a business perspective. Completely failed. It didn't work. But from a program perspective, or an organizational behavior perspective, it was a complete success. Because the idea <coughs> was that building, rebuilding your organization in the digital world was a stress test for the organization. What if we can't find each other in the real world? We can't find the finance department or um, HR department or anything like that. Uh, will we be able to find each other in the digital world? So what's fake, what's real, was a stress test for them. And organizations are uh, more or less concerned about the future. Uh, survey just months ago from uh, Andy. Um, in the past six years, organizations believing they have the required uh, capabilities for digital transformation uh, stay more or less the same. The digital capabilities stay more or less the same, 40 percent, still under 40 percent. But with leadership capabilities, um, they um, went back for almost 10 percent. So the question is, are we ready for the future? What's fake? What's real? I recently heard that um, the lottery polls, these are pre-recorded, but not the drawing of by the lottery is it pre-recorded, but, but the, the falling of the ball from the machine, that's pre-recorded, so that's not real. Did you know that? No. <laughs> it's not real, it's fake. Um, which one of these is real? I no idea. But, um, I really enjoy untangling difficult um, uh, issues like the future, predicting the future, I really enjoy that. And, um, I'm very fond of making things that are complicated and complex into way easier uh, bits you can chew off and think about. Uh, do you know the difference between um, complicated and complex? 
<laughs> there is a difference though. Um, my, my, my Vespa scooter, for instance, my Vespa scooter is complicated. But I can take it apart. I can take it apart in old pipes and small screws and I can put it back together. I put in gas and then it will run. Usually I have some spare parts after that process, but, but it will run again. Um, that's complicated. Um, via that theory, you could take an elephant apart. That's possible. If you're a good surgeon, you could rebuild the elephant, put in blood and whatever it, the elephant piece. Uh, but it won't work anymore. That's complex. So there's more. Um, in project management, often you say this is, uh, this is uh, complicated, but we can make it planning. But the outside world is complex. There's always other factors you, do, you have to deal with. It's just a, a matter of uh, from which point you, you look at it. This is a statue of Marcus Rouse, and mm -hmm. if you walk around it, you can see various uh, views on, on the, the idea. Then about digital transformation. Um, <coughs> my story will be about, about digital transformation, digital integration, and the future. Um, at first, I know there's way more theories than this one, but uh, the first part of my theory is that digital transformation is that what is happening around us. So we don't actually have an influence on that. Those are the things that are happening. And digital integration is the parts we pick out, the parts we decide upon, this will be, be adapting and adapting. So digital transformation is what happens around us, digital integration is what we, what we do with that. Um, for instance, uh, what's the idea about um, digital transformation? The idea, general idea is that it will bring us an improvement of existing business processes. That's an idea. It's, I think it's about <coughs> setting priorities. To be seven priorities, I give you the choice. If you can choose between um, good sanitation, anywhere, or internet, anywhere. Which one of you can choose clean, healthy, good sanitation? Uh, that's the last one here. Yeah. The combination would be ideal, <laughs> but, this is, but this is a real practice. There are more people in the world who have internet anywhere. There are more people who have mobile phones and iPads and, and, and all the devices you can use, you can think of, um, than there are people that have good, good sanitation. Yeah. Let's look at it from an organizational perspective. Um, what will be technical? Uh, what would be technically of use to us? Well, um, let's say cloud. Do you agree? Cloud? Cloud is the future? Yeah. Might be. Well, many of the CEOs from organizations in cloud, that, that would be like software as a service, usage. Uh, um, and, and then let me ask you a question. Why did KPM stop with their cloud services? <coughs> we had a brilliant name. It was called App. It could be a word like let me Google that for you, I'll up it to you. And it would be marketing ways of uh, brilliant. I think they even advised their customers that they did have, they, they, they advised them, well, you can keep on using or start using Dropbox when driving and Google Drive. What is that? If that was the future, why does an organization stop? They can't compete, basically, because of the competition. Because of the competition, might be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did any, any of you hear heard about App? No, I think there is also an answer there. Yeah. Um, as an organization, it's key to keep scanning what's happening around you and try and visionize that and do some experiments in a more or less safe environment. But getting bad ideas, if it doesn't work for you, stop it before you spend way much more money. Okay? And once you've found that what you want to bring to the other world, to the other side, uh, it's like evangelizing. You look at this, this is what we have learned to. But also, all the time, keep track on for who am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Because at the end, it should bring you more turnover or bring you to more fun or more than you put into it. It's like the Red Queen <coughs> from Alice in Wonderland, the Red Queen effect. Red Queen stays, you have to keep running in order to stay in the same place. And if you want to move ahead, you'll have to run twice as fast. Well, um, <coughs> point of view. That from educational point of view. Right, view and idea. Educational point of view. This is my idea about education. At one time there was a ferryman, and he brought people to the other side of the river, which is what ferrymen do, and it would cost you only ten cents, one dime, because it's fair. But the ferryman was <coughs> of age, so he had to 
think about what would I be doing with my company. He had two sons, uh, so he couldn't just hand the company over to his two sons. So he thought about it and he said, well, my youngest son, he will take over the company. And my oldest son, he will go to school for seven years. He saved up some money. All the guys from all the and saved up some money and this is my son will be going to school for seven years. And after all the time, the younger son took over the company, uh, they modernized a little bit. And then the two brothers met after seven years. So the youngest brother was very interested in what his bigger brother had learned in all the seven years from school. And the older brother said, this is what I've learned. And he just bought to the other side. And this has only been done once before, so it's very <laughs> But um, um, the, the youngest brother, he, he, uh, he wasn't uh, um, enthusiastic about that. He said, well, all you've learned in seven years is exactly worth one dime. That's my idea on education. <laughs> might it come from experience then? That might be, that might be the, the way. Um, from a survey uh, of 30,000 people in uh, the Benelux, where they were asked, which is the, which is the, the way you want to learn new things, it's via sharing, that's one of the answers. Via <coughs> conferences like this one, where you, you, you gain some new knowledge and share it with your colleagues on the next day, or uh, uh, share it in a LinkedIn group, or any other uh, community. So that's the way we want to learn, I think. And from experience, share our experience. I have an example on that as well. There was this ship engine at the time, and people couldn't get it back to work. It broke down and people couldn't get it back to work. So they brought in this uh, ship's technician, and he looked at the machine for a while, took out his hammer, tapped to the side of the machine, and it started running again. So everyone was very happy and enthusiastic, and thank you very much for what you've done. You can send us your bill, and he did the next day. He sent an invoice for 10,000 euros. So they called him and said, 10,000 euros, you only tapped on the side with a hammer. They said, well, tapping on the side of that with the hammer is just a two euro thing. The knowing where to tap with the hammer, that's 9,998 euros. So, <laughs> if it isn't education, if it isn't uh, experience, it might be science, for of science. I, for myself, am very um, uh, inspired by this, this lady. She's called Melissa Marshall, and she's a communications uh, scientist, communications specialist, and she does research on the way scientists communicate. So that's where I said that the book, it's a book the lots of She uh, studies scientists. And uh, to talk with scientists, you need a formula, obviously, so this is her formula. If you take out of science, if you take out a jargon and put the bullet points, and you divide it by relevance, and you tell your story with passion. So I'm very inspired by her. Uh, who am I, actually? My name is Mike P. Kelvin because of my iPhone things, I might be Kelvin Pisa. My iPhone, well, it's in my back. My iPhone that knows where I'm going to be, even if there's something not in my calendar. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Which one of you did the fingerprint thingy on the iPhone? Yeah. Thank you. And, and many more if you did more fingers than just one, it might be easier. Yeah. Did you know that Apple built a database of fingerprints in seven months bigger than the Interpol database in 70 years? <laughs> <laughs> and the iPhone also knows where you will be, even if it's not in your calendar. Yeah? What are things happening around you? Um, I worked for the University of Applied Science for three days in, uh, in the week. Uh, I'm a member of RIDS, which is a, a traditional group of uh, Masters in Project Management. I was a lecturer at the Master of Project Management. Um, and I hope my new company, um, later when I grow, I will be, um, I hope to be a, a public speaker, so that's why I'm my dream. <laughs> and that's why yours is for me, uh, for promotional needs. Um, please, please feel free to connect. Yeah. My um, areas of interest are project management and the digital workspace. Uh, digital workspace, uh, I'll give you, I think, a good example in the world of medicine, where this might be a digital workspace for one of the nurses bringing around their uh, uh, medicine towards the patient. Uh, and this is, I think, way more accurate than the, the scribbling by, by doctors. I think this might be his digital, digital workspace. I can work from anywhere. Uh, this was a, a Skype meeting with uh, this guy was working in England at the time, and this one in Germany. And three of us were in the Netherlands, and each in our own house, sharing documents. I think this sounds very familiar to you all. Yeah. And you can work from, from anywhere in the world. In the airport in the world, 
But this has a huge influence on organizational structures. It might have a huge influence on the way we interact in our companies. For instance, this is here, which is a, a fairly large company, and this is a, this is a traditional model of, of an organization. This might also be a model of the organization. You know, this front man that was closest by the door. There are completely different um, uh, interactions with people. It might be a change from ego towards eco. And maybe this is the actual organizational chart. <laughs> <coughs> I will be sharing my slides on the And then we've got some words. And then I'll be sharing my slides. And then what's happening around us. Uh, four statements, and I think they're a bit too small to, to, for you to read. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'll just address them shortly. The telephone has too many shortcomings to become uh, a, a common mean of. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Nowadays, people are experiencing more stress due to all the networks that are arising. Yeah. Uh, I think the world's ready for five computers, and 640k should be enough for anyone. But stated by the last one by Bill Gates in 1981, 640k will be enough for everyone. Um, Mr. Watson said in the Bill Gates didn't say that. Is it a myth? Yes. Ah, oh, there I go. Well, it would be nice. I'll take this one out. Thank you. You ever stop doing this part? Thank you very much. But um, <coughs> here behind these statements, I didn't put up. I'll, I'll be a bit more careful then. I don't know if Mr. Watson said that. Um, I, I do think Mr. Watson said uh, something about they will quite be ready for five years. And my point being, I think he might be the only one who will be right in the future. This is 5 MBA in 1966. This is 64 gigs in 2017. About storage capacity, we have uh, in 1977 80 MB storage capacity for only $12,000. And now we have 80 MB per second for only 24 euros. Um, is anyone of you here by train today? None of you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, something about the first train, there was a, in the Netherlands, there was a, between Haarlem and Amsterdam, there was a train, and there was a, an opera about that. Our farmers were very scared that the cows wouldn't get any milk anymore, and they wanted to explore it in, in, in the past. <coughs> and uh, if anyone should be travelling by train in the near future, please be careful, because the idea is that if the train goes faster than 50 kilometers an hour, a vacuum will arise and you will suffocate. So, uh, just to be warned. And we've made all this, this road from 1835 <coughs> to 1839 up to now, nowadays, to the app Yo. Does any of you know the app Yo? None of you? Okay. Well, this is a, a, an app group. Seven billion people in the world use this app. And it has only one functionality. We can make a connection, for instance, and I can send you Yo. And the only functionality you have is send me a connection back and say, Yo, that's it. That's it. And that may sound funny to you. But um, my parents live in Indonesia. And if I take that back for 40 years in time, I would be writing my mother a letter about nothing actually, the dog died, and this is what happens here. And, and the letter would be on its way for six weeks to arrive at my mother's house. My mother would write me a letter back at the same day and another six weeks it would take for her letter to come back to me. The <coughs> general idea behind both of the letters was, hey, I'm thinking of you. Oh, yes, I'm thinking of you as well. <coughs> so maybe you always the upper level of communication. <coughs> uh, think about most of it. Again, if you're driving by train uh, in the near future, think about and uh, listen to most of the conversations that are being held by, by mobile phone in the trains. They're just like, oh, and that's the essence of the communication. The rest is... Um, <laughs> did you know about the Red Flag Act? This is not governmental um, um, interference with the digital <coughs> um, The Red Flag Act was um, because of the, um, the, the invention of the car, the, the horse miscarriage. Uh, this might be dangerous for people because this thing is way faster than usual um, means of communication. So it was ordered that a man should be walking in front of this car waving a red flag because it might be dangerous that thing behind me is fast. 
But that's government regulation for you. And also a horizontal bypass people by the car owners. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <coughs> well, um, and, and I'd like to show you some, some pictures that most of the digital transformation things are in the world that are aren't really new. This is a sat nav. It's a 1930. Um, but we've come a long way. This is um, uh, Tiger Woods teeing off in 2000. This is Tiger Woods teeing off in 2018. This is the inauguration of uh, the last Pope, Dr. Ratzinger, in 2008. This is the inauguration of um, Pope Francis in 2013. Uh, Pope Francis, by the way, is called the selfie Pope. And he's very keen at that. Uh, speaking of selfies, this is a selfie moment with the presidential candidate. <laughs> so this is new. This is the first selfie new one is taken in 1839. And even famous people experiment with selfies, some are better at it than others. Um, so this is, uh, in the Netherlands, there is uh, a traffic sign being, again, the government's will the interference the government. The traffic sign being, this is a test of pilot. Um, if you want, by with your mobile phone, you, you will be um, worried that you're nearing a, a, a traffic point. Um, in China, you have separate lanes to be walking with your mobile phone and the ones not using your mobile phone. Uh, what will the future bring us? I don't know. It's tough to make predictions, especially about the future, but what will our children be doing uh, as a kind of work? They might be a drone pilot, they might be an uh, app developer, they might be an Uber driver. They might be a cloud specialist, they might be a big data analyst, or a um, what's it called? sustainability manager, or a social media manager. <coughs> and even in the afterlife, some of my former students have started a company which is a caretaker for the afterlife in the digital world. Because what if you're, if you're a next of kin, uh, <coughs> next of kin should, should die? Do you have all the passwords to stop their? Programs on uh, Facebook. But this company, which is making a small question for them, uh, this company helps uh, people uh, how to deal with the, uh, the uh, digital legacy of, of, of people. Yeah. Also, problem solving things around us, the way we find our information. I think the internet has played a huge role in that sharing uh, information, providing information, and then new technical developments. This also is a Vespa product. It's a, it's a briefcase that follows me around Thailand shopping. Yeah. I can have a pizza delivered in Amsterdam by, by a robot. Yeah. And a colleague of mine is doing his PhD studies on the step from wearables into implants, which also isn't all that new. This is a step that thingy from 1987. <coughs> so we live in a, a company, economy where the um, world has changed completely the other side around from companies chasing us to us as the Jewish combined chasing companies. We live in a world where the biggest transportation agency in the world doesn't have its own means of transportation. We live in a world where the largest real estate company in the world doesn't own its own real estate. We live in a world where the largest shop doesn't have its own stock. We live in a world where the hugest, uh, the largest media uh, provider doesn't own its own media. And there's some stuff in there. But, um, this is the world we live in. And there's something about digital transformation that I have to deal with. I had to tell my mother that these two are uh, lectures at the University of Applied and these two are students. Uh, this is a, a session where a, a management team uh, was asked to, to get acquainted with each other. Uh, this is a Friday afternoon drinks. <laughs> we live in a world where dolls are being rejected from, from shops because they might be spying on us. And before I go anywhere, I check the air quality. And should it be uh, the case that you have to uh, do your duty in public, don't, because you might have on the job. Well, digital transformation <laughs> will be the first part of my presentation. Um, it influences the way we learn, it influences the way we cooperate, and the way we handle data. So what will the future bring us? See how the technology advances. Uh, uh, TU, a technical university, and uh, stated that we will be needing way more transfer speed. We will be needing way more transfer speed for uh, future services. We don't know yet, but we will be needing more transfer speed. In fact, we're all connected. I asked you to make a LinkedIn connection with me, or I offered to make a LinkedIn connection with me. You can uh, do a, a course in uh, updating your, your LinkedIn profile, and I think this might be a handy start.
say as well, this is in five steps, how to get rid of your LinkedIn profile. Um, I have to deal with social, mobile, and local. Because right in the middle of the digital world and the actual world is where the magic might happen. But how do I know what's in the head of my colleague? How do I know um, if we can maybe combine our, our knowledge into a, a certain combined shared knowledge base or something like that? How do I know my colleague at the other side of the world where he's good at it? Or I have found it? How can I get my information from my head into the head of the other? Email isn't the answer, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one to watch. Uh, it's a film, it's a small thing about how many emails it would take to just come up with one document. But the fact is, we create massive amounts of, uh, amounts of data every day. And they won't be able to find anything there anymore using filter. So maybe AI is the answer. If we look at uh, Moore's law, in 2045, computer data <coughs> will have surpassed our brains. Yeah. But then there's one small issue. And I think, again, uh, Mr. Watson's remarks on the world might be ready for five computers. I think he will be right at one point. I think we'll be five computers will be sufficiently will be having devices, wearing devices having implant devices to just use only the five computers. Uh, there's only one step, one major important step to take, and that's the ability to think illogically. That's what a computer can't do. Why do we think this is funny? Well, I hope you think this is funny. Uh, it might be funnier if, if, if <coughs> it might be more funny if the president was on the scale the other way around. That's, that's also a thing the computer doesn't understand. Why is this funny? You can recognize Mr. Obama, but why are there two of them? Well, you can teach a computer, and there's a mirror there. And why do I know this is the president? Because of the small flags and the guys in the suits there, and the guys laughing at his joke. It's all, all things we, we just find, find out in, in a matter of seconds or split seconds in our head. And why do we find this funny? Do you know who made this painting? Rembrandt? Yeah, it might be. It is it. Um, this is all the work of Rembrandt, except for the last one, Young Six found a few months ago. This is all the work of Rembrandt in, uh, put into a computer. And then the computer was ordered to draw a Rembrandt. But not just given the order to, to make a Rembrandt, but it was also ordered, it has to be a young man, 35 years of age, looking at the right side, because um, you can show 100 pictures of trees to a computer, and the computer will state, uh, this is a tree, this is a tree, this is a tree. But if you turn it around, you ask the computer to, to draw a tree for you, you get all these beautiful structures, but we don't recognize that as a tree. So there's one more small step that has the, the ability to think illogically. That's my opinion. So um, we've been teaching <coughs> about computers, but I think the next step will be to teach computers about us. And then, um, what competences do we, will we be needing for that? Um, for the 21st century, uh, competences, I think the most important one is computational thinking. And computational thinking is partly logically thinking, it's using a solution that's worked in this environment and trying to plant it in a completely different environment and say, well, when this work here as well. Like um, Oli Gibbs, who used uh, an app called FaceApp in the Rags Museum. <coughs> so we have to reinvent ourselves, actually, Henry who had invented 100 artists, he just taught them all, made persona and all, and from the persona, he made art. So that's very funny, this is a made-up group called the Dormer Consultative, uh, a consortium, and they would be made in arts like, 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 like that's what he says, and be careful because it's sharp, the, the work point. <coughs> As I said earlier, somewhere between the digital world and the actual world, this is where the matching is happening. Um, some things have landed, like <coughs> cloud, internets, something like AI is still there in flight somewhere. But we have to deal with social, mobile, and local. We have to decide what we to do with that. And activity based working in Dutch and <coughs> isn't a solution. The new way of working is 22 years old at this point. And this is a part of my collection. I collect uh, the way people um, reorganize their. Um, physical workspace, like this, or like this, or they hang up notes, if I'm in a meeting, don't disturb me, or they make uh, uh, auto replies on their email, I will be reading a new email if it's only sent to me directly, not in CC, or people using bots like this one, she said here, you know, after the 30th of June, I will answer after the 15th of August, yeah, you have consulting hours, 
And I even have a colleague who has uh, all of these stuff on his um, cabinet, in his room, and decides upon what we will be doing today. This is the gift that I've been putting in on my door. Yeah? This is my personal favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. Um, in Belgium, there are experiments are being done at this point that you decide where it's uh, a silent day, so you're not allowed to talk to your colleagues that try to work in silence. You go to experiments which goes somewhere in the virtual world, somewhere in the actual world, somewhere in the middle, that's where the, the magic is happening. And maybe a, a social collaboration using of uh, enterprise social media might be, might be a solution. But we've all done some research, and the vast majority of companies have enterprise social media, <coughs> like Jammer and Slack and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams might be, might be a, a good example of that. But only in 10% of the cases, those tooling is actually connected to work processes. So there's lots of work to be done because the idea behind the internet wouldn't be just, not just sending information, but collaborating, working together in the environment. But again, that asks for a completely different set of skills and, and competences, and then even completely different organizational structures. Mm -hmm. So digital integration, enterprise social media might be a suitable solution for us. Uh, then the topic of data visualization. I think you all know reporting standards, <coughs> um, data visualization. Um, like, I think just one, does anyone of you recognize this? It's a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's part of fiction. Mm -hmm. And this is data visualization of the amount of screen time the actors have. So this is a completely different uh, way of visualizing things you would like to tell someone else. You all know these, I hope. Yeah. But um, our, our mind is capable of way more than that. What if we use a bit art in a very, very easy way? What if we use a picture like this one? There's a vacancy there, or uh, something about the network uh, capacity, um, downtime, things like that. What if we use this? Uh, we, we're perfectly fine to make beautiful drawings like this one from Black Matter Star, where we have a deep grid with fits, bites, and behavior, and uh, a dashboard which looks very nice. Or uh, this is a situation in the, in the, the City of Rotterdam. But if you're building a road down the road here, you can report on we've been using this amount of sand, we've been using this amount of hours, we've been using this amount of stones and, and what's more. But we can also, we can also report on um, we've made the city of Brussel two meters safer, which is a completely different way of, uh, <coughs> of reporting, I think. Um, as I said earlier, we create massive, massive, massive amounts of data in <coughs> pictures and all the online activities we do. We, may, we create massive amounts of data. And my statement is we won't be able to find anything there anymore if we find via search engines. The idea is filter filter is if you have an exact filter, if you have the greatest filter in Google, you will only find relevant hits. But if there are 20,000 relevant hits, you're way off. At this point, if you type in something in Google, you know this is advertisement and those three or four hits are relevant to me. But if you find only relevant hits, you can't find anything anymore. So my theory is that we will be creating, and we have been doing that, um, we will be creating an avatar. And the avatar will filter information. Because the statement is, uh, information used to be a pond, and it's turned into a river. And the avatars will be filtering information, uh, information coming towards us or not. And we've been creating avatars for the past 10, 15 years. Uh, our LinkedIn profile is an, is an avatar. <coughs> uh, our Facebook profile, or any other social, more or less social pro profiles, or even shopping profiles. If you, if you put something at bold.com, uh, that's also an avatar. Because bold.com will advise you on You've bought Harry Potter card 1 to 6, which you like by uh, number 7. So my idea is that um, we won't be searching for information in the future, but we will be filtering out information we don't want. 
So then my story is yours. We don't want to do our company don't want. But you have. I think that's a good question. I, I think we've been um, we've been uh, we've been doing it. And and at some point we're just starting to notice what do we what do we feel like that. But I think also the, the fingerprint effect is, is the same. In, in the example of Harry Potter, um, I think it's great. Uh, that they already backed and maybe even shipped part number seven for me having bought part number one to six. And I think it's very um, easy if I am, um, uh, if an accident should happen to me, is I think it's very easy that any doctor anywhere in the Netherlands will have my profile. Um, but I don't think it's, um, um, I, we're, we're the generation who um, should deal the most with privacy issues, but we don't. And I think we've passed that more or less. I think the, the avatars will be creating, maybe be creating our, our, our privacy filters. So, um, in short, my presentation was digital transformation influences the way we work. We cooperate, we learn things. Digital integration, uh, integration and by social media might be an interesting one. It's about thinking which tools we will, will we be using. And in the future, I think we'll be using an avatar. And what do we have to do? Again, I'm going to ask the Sasha. We'll think. You figure it out yourself. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'm asking a minute for a few times, but if you don't know what I'd like to see, I'm asking a question for you tomorrow. Just a minute for a minute. One of the elements that I'm not going to get where I hear about you in the factor. Is what I hear a lot around me is that people are, are not all the data overload. And I think that the new sector, especially the new generation, especially the older generation, need to be, yeah, I don't want to say trained, but need to become more aware of how can you behave in the best way to do nothing. Yeah. Yeah? Because I think it's a great start to do nothing, but lots of people do sense. Some kind of urgency to do something. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the behavioral aspect of this, I think it's very interesting. Absolutely, I, I completely agree. It's something like uh, a new technology uh, is also uh, seen as magic. And there has to be a kind of magic in there in order for us to be willing to, to, to use it. Um, and um, I think if, if, you, if you place it in time, we had our ideas about the trains, we had our ideas about. Well, there was also an uprising on uh, the newspapers uh, because the idea was that the, the, the up, bigger scale printing of newspapers would have a huge effect on um, um, social uh, circumstances because people in public transportation were reading the newspaper instead of chatting to each other. Um, we say something about 15, 16 year old people. At one point, there was a party with friends of ours, and her daughter turned 15, and they were sitting in the group. 15 year olds and they were just acting. At some point, they were just laughing or making just one remark, and there's the time they were just all in their phones. Um, but what if I use it in my presentation? What if I use, besides the words I'm using, I can also use a picture? It might be, might even enrich our ways of communication. So I think there's, you're absolutely right, there's a, a huge um, uh, human factor element there, and I think most of us will just pick out what we need. Thank you.